Hello YouTube, welcome to another video. This is how to script your own admin commands part four. And in this video, we're gonna be making our own unbanned command and we're actually gonna be designing our own admin GUI from scratch. So like the video, subscribe, and let's get started. All right, so let's make our unbanned command to begin with. So we're gonna say else if command equals equals prefix dot dot unban oops no space there then and all we're gonna do here is we're gonna use something called remove async remove async and you can see right here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the user ID from the band store so to show you how this works one more time so we have a band server which is called the band store and I'll just call it bands and when I say when I say exclamation mark ban then find the victim and kick them and then set async their user ID and set it equal to true. So once again, we have their user ID and we set it equal to true. And now, once we say exclamation mark unban, now instead of setting it, we're gonna remove it. So it's gonna look for their user ID, which is gonna be this. And it's basically what this command does, it's basically just gonna delete it. And now we're gonna see how it works in an actual game server. Okay, actually I made a mistake. Let me just change this really quickly. Instead of doing game.players.victim, we're going to do game.players get player get user ID from name async victim. And now this will work. Alright, and the reason why I needed to use this instead of what we were using here is because if we say exclamation mark unban, then it's going to search for the player in the game. And well, if they're banned, they really they can't even join the game. So it's gonna search for a player that doesn't even exist. So to fix that, we're gonna use something called get user ID from name async. And what this will do is even if the player is not in the server, it's gonna search for their name, it's gonna get their user ID, and it's gonna basically remove that user ID from our bands database. So now let's join the game. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna ban AquaGem777. So we're gonna do exclamation mark ban AquaGem777. And now, aqua is gone and now aqua will try to rejoin and the game will not let him because he is in he's inside of the band store his id is inside of the band store it checks the band store he's not in now we unban him and now he's removed from the band store and now it should let him and it worked okay perfect the code worked he is unbanned and that's basically how the entire banning and unbanning system works. So now we're gonna make an admin GUI. All right, so now we're gonna make an admin GUI. So, by, so we're gonna start by adding a screen GUI. We're gonna add a frame and let's make it black. Okay, now we're gonna set this to a scale size. And if you don't know what that means, you should watch the video. It's probably gonna be up here somewhere or in the description but we're gonna make it a small GUI it's gonna be rectangular and let's make the text we're gonna call it admin panel all right so now we're gonna add uh two text boxes oops text box we're gonna set the size to a scale value and and this text box will be to enter the target's name so the player that you want to execute the command on and let's make the placeholder a little bit darker okay yeah it doesn't have to look too good I guess just for demonstration purposes and then we're gonna do enter the command and then we're gonna add a text button and now this command will say this one will say execute we'll make it scaled So this, this will do for now, I guess.
all right so now we've got all of that so now that's what our admin panel looks like and now what we have to do is we have to code in everything so we're gonna do we're gonna add a local script we're gonna rename all of these things execute i'm gonna call this target we're gonna call this command now we're gonna do script.parent.execute.mouse button one click function. So what this does is when the admin clicks execute, execute, when they click it, then do everything that's in between this and this. So everything in here. So as soon as they click execute, we're gonna fetch the target, script.parent.target.text, and then we're gonna fetch the command. So now target will be whatever they wrote in here and command will be whatever they wrote in here. And this will all happen when you click execute. So now if game.players find first child target, then now we want to make sure the target actually exists inside of players. And now what we'll do is we'll make a remote function. Remote event execute command. Okay. And we're gonna fetch that event too. And then we're gonna do event, fire, tar we're gonna fire the command and the target. So, fire server. Okay, so now this right here, this kind of gets complex if you're a beginner, but this is how a local script and a server script can communicate with each other. So now we've got that much going on, we're gonna do the server script part so now we have a local script and a service script and the reason for this is because in order to use gui functions like clicking we need a local script and for the actual admin command stuff we need the script and to communicate between the local script and the script you need something called a remote event and i'll probably make a video on this later so stay tuned and now what we're going to do is we're going to do game.replicatedStorage.executeCommand.onServerEvent connect function player command and target. So now when this is fired, it's going to fire it's going to fire the command and the target. So it's going to it's going to send the command that you wrote and the target to this script, and it'll also send the player that did it. So it'll send the admin. So now what we'll do is instead of when they chat, we will just copy this and just paste it here, basically. And I guess I can change this to Krypton. Okay. Um, we will get rid of the reason for now because we only have two text boxes. And for the band store, uh, I'll probably just put this in here. Okay. So now all of that is fixed. And now basically it's just doing everything in here except it's now using the command, the target, and the player that's actually running the command instead of using the chat. So we're gonna do sync to script. Oh, I should probably make that white so you can see it. Um, but that's fine. And we're gonna execute the exclamation mark kill. Okay, it worked. Perfect. So let me make that white so you can actually see it. Okay, so now basically, just like how we were executing chat commands, this time we're not executing commands on the chat, but we're actually executing commands on the command panel. So now I can just do stuff like kick, send to script, and as soon as I click execute, it'll kick me. And just to reiterate how all of this works, basically, when the player clicks execute, it will fetch the target, which is the text that the player wrote here, It'll fetch the command, which is what you wrote here. And then it'll fetch the execute command uh, remote event, which allows the local script and the server script to communicate with each other. It's gonna look for the target, which is in it's gonna look for the target inside of players to make sure they exist. And then it's gonna fire the command and the target. And then as soon as this line gets executed, it goes all the way over here. It's gonna check if the player that wrote all of this and clicked execute is an admin, so their name should be here. And then it literally just does everything that we've been doing here. Except now, instead of using the chat command, 
we're using command and the victim. And this command is the same thing as this command. And that command is the same thing as the thing you wrote here. And likewise, this victim right here is the same thing as this target, which is the same thing that you wrote in here. So with that being said, you can, it's basically the same thing, same concept, but now we're using an admin panel. So we'll try it again, use fire, execute, and there we go, yeah. So that's how you make an admin panel in a nutshell. If you like this video, remember to subscribe and like the video and comment down if you want a part five. Now for part five, I have no idea what I'll make, what I'll add on, because now, now we've got, we've basically got basic commands. We've got an admin panel, but if you want a part five, just comment down below and I'll make it happen. See you next time.